And uh, as we promised, we have uh, a very special guest. Uh, thank you so much again uh, uh, for agreeing to be in the show. Uh, he is the uh, F1 and motorsport analyst at uh, TSN, about many things. Um, and uh, professional racing driver Tim we Harini. Were, yeah. What? What else? We hope that we didn't butcher your name too much here. No, man. no, you guys got it. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, yeah, welcome no, to thanks, the show. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it, guys. Uh, nice to finally put uh, faces uh, with the names. So it's, uh, it's cool, man. I like what you guys got going on here. It's pretty cool. cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. You have more faces faces around the internet than we do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know. You guys are pretty popular, let me tell you. Oh, <laughs> that's news to us. I don't, I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't. I, I, I don't think that. But th no, th thank you, thank you so much again. Um, we we really appreciate it. We can't wait to get right into it. Uh, but why don't you like just for uh, the people that because we we do have some international uh, viewers and listeners. Uh, if you want to just uh, quickly uh, say a couple words about yourself. Uh, yeah, sure. So my name's Tim Harini. Um, raced, uh, raced, been racing since I was nine years old. Uh, started in go karts, obviously, and worked my way up through the racing ladder: Formula Ford, uh, Formula Two Thousand, uh, Formula Renault. As part of the Renault Driver Development Program, into Formula One. Um, from there, raced uh, in Champ Car Atlantics, which is now branded as Indy Lights, and. From oh. that, did some did some testing in Champ Car a little bit. That, that's and, like the GP two uh, of of Indy, right? Yes, exactly. Yes, yeah. exactly what it is. The Peter and, series. Uh, from there, went over to Europe, uh, raced for Porsche in, in the FIA GT Championship. Uh, I was the only Canadian to uh, to do that. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so it was, so it was pretty cool. I had a lot of fun <laughs> doing that. Came back and and started doing a lot of work with uh, auto manufacturers. And I still, to this day, do a ton of work for auto manufacturers. I work a lot uh, with Ferrari and Maserati across Wicked. Canada uh, nationally. I uh, just actually got back from Vancouver working for uh, working for Maserati. So, um, yeah, I do that as well. And uh, a little bit of work for Nissan on the side. And when I'm not doing all that, I'm working for uh, work for TSN as uh, the racing analyst, handling all of our F1 and, um, you know, NASCAR, IndyCar kind of needs. And uh, if they need me to go on air and talk about that kind of stuff, I do. So, yeah. Absolutely. You know, keep... we, we actually were just watching your recap of, uh, of the Bahrain race. And I love it. I really love it. <laughs> That that you that you put in that thing with Alonso and uh, and, and Johnny Herbert that was great. <laughs> yeah, whenever whenever I make uh, whenever I produce uh, the highlights, I always I always try to keep um, I go I try to keep the average fan uh, engaged, but I always want to try and touch on the the hardcore fan because the hardcore fan really wants to see those underlying stories yeah. like Roman Grosjean finishing fifth and Stoffel yeah. Van Dorn. Uh, you know, uh, finishing 10. How was, good was you know, that? Result. I mean, that was absolutely outstanding. <laughs> so, like, racing fans, hardcore fans really want to see that, but I always have to try and mix in, uh, you know, the Lewis Hamiltons, the Rosbergs, the rivalry between the two of them to kind of spice things up as well. But, yeah, I always I always try, whenever I'm producing the F1 content, I always make sure to uh, just keep the hardcore racing fan in mind. So what do you think? Do you agree with Johnny Herbert? No, not especially at all. After, <laughs> especially after what Van Doren did in his car. No, like, come on. Uh, Fernando Alonso is a double world champion. Uh, the guy, yeah. if you were to go back and look at last year's uh, qualifying results and just see how close him and Jensen Button were together, like, uh, at any given time, they were only one to two tenths off of each other. Both of them are still hungry. Like, you can't sit there and say that the guy should retire when, you know, obviously he still, he still has what it takes to make a bad car fast and yeah. that McLaren Honda, you know, <laughs> well, <laughs> it's not you, the greatest, right? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, fly, it flies really fast. Yeah, it does do that. That's a dark, dark yeah, joke. Yeah, just shots fired right away. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate the guy, but if you see the full, the full speed video. <laughs> but, oh man, he's, Fernando is, is so lucky after oh, geez, yeah. uh yeah after that crash he's he's so lucky he, you know what a lot of people say that these guys aren't athletes but you know what they have to go through in the cockpit of a race car 46 g unbelievable but yeah but, but you're but you're thinking of like not only that but like you're wrestling like a thousand pound beast that's trying to get away from you you know with <laughs> five to six g's you're pulling longitudinally and latitudinally all race all the time yeah. yeah, all like for an hour and a half, an hour and thirty-five. Yeah. 
while, while maintaining like super concentration on what you have to do, how to approach your corners, watch watch your markers. I'm I'm not a very I'm I'm not a very good driver not by any stint I'm 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 one he's, of those he's awful at the yeah, game yeah I'm one of those <laughs> F1 fans that like like you know like not because I don't play sec bass doesn't mean that I can't appreciate jazz <laughs> but right but I, I I can appreciate the sport but I'm a terrible terrible driver when when I've tried to drive like I can I can you know. I have done some laps that I've been proud of, but I can't maintain it. I never could. I can never think of, of, a, of a racing track and start memorizing breaking points just by looking at a chip in the, in the paint over there. <laughs> like, how do, you, how do you do that? <laughs> well, yeah, a big part of it is, is trying to get re really good reference points. So you have to remember, um, we're going to get really hardcore here, guys. All right. So, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. so like, buckle up. So when you're coming, <laughs> obviously, down at Obviously, obviously down a straightaway, yeah. going into a corner, you know, you have to have some sort of a reference marker for braking. And once braking is initiated, you're really applying about 500 foot pounds of pressure into that brake pedal because you got to stop the car, right? You got to get it slowed down. Yeah. At the same time, you're downshifting and you're trying to like look as far ahead as possible to see the apex and the exit because the further you look ahead, through like through this much <laughs> yeah exactly the, the, the slower the slower everything kind of becomes yeah. um and that's a big thing that you learn is, is always trying to look as far ahead as you can because the information uh is coming at you so fast that your brain needs to process what is happening because you're processing information that's visually coming at you but you're also processing information that's coming you know into your body into yeah. your chest you know through your legs you're kind of feeling what the the back end of the car is doing by the seat of your pants. So it's uh, well, that's, it's always important to have a braking reference marker. It's so important. Absolutely, absolutely. And then hit it. Yeah, like 60, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sometimes times in it's a row. not even like uh, sometimes it's not even a mark in a wall. Except I've used uh, bumps in the pavement. Um, some some people use like flagging stands. Uh, some people have known to use like if there's a cut in the grass where the grass kind of turns to pavement or the grass turns that's, to asphalt, like that's a marker. That, like, that's what Lewis Hamilton said that you know he, that that he judges sometimes even by a mistake that the person that was painting the white line made. Like if they just like went off wow. a little bit. Yeah. 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 If, even if yeah, even if there's a small little uh, nick, well, it has to be quite big, obviously, to see it, but. Yeah. Just something that's like an error, even in the pavement that you can see. Uh, you know, that is is huge um, in terms of like a reference marker, and that kind of helps with confidence uh, with braking. Because with braking, you know, you have to remember you're approaching something at a fair rate of speed. So uh, to get the best out of of uh, braking and the efficiency of it, you you have to have a good reference so you can push the limit from there on out. Because you have the reference. Okay, now it's time to go for a qualifying lap. I'm going to push my reference a little bit further and see what happens. And that's kind of like where everyone says, you know, seems you're on a hot terrifying. lap, pushing it over the limit. That's part of pushing it over the limit. So yeah, It seems so scary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I've, I've done it in the video games and my heart gets pounding. I can imagine <laughs> going 300 doing it. Dude, I have a hard time yeah, going like 120 oh. on the highway. <laughs> Well, yeah, exactly. I think about like you know 300, you know Formula One car, you know down at the top speed on a straightaway, like what almost 330 kilometers an hour, and and then you got to think of all the force that it takes to slow the car down. Oh, yeah. So you're you're not using 500 foot pounds of force on the brake pedal. You're you're now going to use like six or seven to try and really attack it and really get the most out of the braking. It's okay. I, ha I have this theory, but I ha it's completely unfunded. We've just like been speculating about this like, since for a while. You know how the brake in a racing car is on the on the on the right on, on like on the well at least the f1 F cars have their their brake pedal is the right one is that because with your dominant what? leg you get like maybe more of a feel of when you like how much you have to brake or or no so 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 the gas pedal is, is always on the it's on, on the, the right, right. All, the brakes on the, the left. left. Brake, the brakes, brake pedal brakes is, on the left. Is, on the is, left. is it a switch on an F1 car? I may be uh, completely wrong. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm wrong. He doesn't no. drive. So. I'm right. no, just, I, don't, I don't drive like I said. On, on a road car, you'd, you'd use you'd just use your one foot for both. Yeah. But you have you have one on each because sometimes you need to press both at once. Yeah, true. Yeah, exactly. There's no there's no foot clutch anymore. No. There's no hey, heel hey, and towing hey. anymore. They they oh. did that sometimes with old cars where you'd heel and tow. Oh, that at Senna was the master of that. Yeah. yeah. He was I used to practice in my Honda Civic, 
<laughs> Heel and towing. Dude, I, yeah, no, I think two, that's why two, you can Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't even know where the where the pedal is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tim, you're 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 from you're from Uxbridge. No, right? actually, or, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, you, your Wikipedia is wrong. <laughs> oh man. I didn't even know there was a Wikipedia. <laughs> there, there, there's some article on the internet that says that you're from Uxbridge. Oh, I, I'm <laughs> You're actually, Peterborough. Um, I'm, I'm from a little village called uh, Keene. It's in Ontario. It's uh, about Peterborough. 30 minutes northeast of Peterborough. Oh, oh yeah. fuck. I went, to, I went to Trent, actually. So I spent a <laughs> okay. good... good good few years there well i mean not so good but, so you know <laughs> uh, 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 is, is is there is there is there a a, a decades long generations long motorsport tradition up there uh no actually where where i grew up yeah, there was farm about, buggies uh, and dirt bikes the, yeah dirt bikes yeah yeah man like i, I did cars. a lot of i did i did a ton of dirt biking um, did you have a field car? Wheeler. Yeah, I, well, I, well, we did. Yeah, 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 exactly, <laughs> right? So uh, the dirt, dirt bikes were a big thing. We built, like, our own little course out in the back of uh, my parents' um, my, my parents' field. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, we, we would zoom around on dirt bikes and stuff back there. But hey, yeah, Have, have you ever been to Gopher Dunes? What's that? Have you ever been out to Gopher Dunes? Oh, no, never. That I actually i that's something that i would like to do for, for sure like i've heard about it it's pretty bad my pretty, uncle owns pretty, that pretty cool. my uncle owns that <laughs> oh no way really oh that's yeah, awesome. they got some like tobacco farms and dirt tr dirt bike <laughs> racing up there <laughs> oh cool i'm sure you guys have a blast when you go out there i haven't been for maybe two years or so but yeah they, they've had like some red bull events they have a uh, national motocross events there now podcast oh, field trip awesome. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, we should make a field trip. <laughs> <laughs> my grandparents used to own a trailer park near, near there, like maybe like ten minutes from there, as well. Okay, okay, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it's but okay. Here's where I was driving with that question because uh, clearly you're you, you you got into motorsports and to me like Canada and North America in general like there's there, it's it's not you you're never too far from a racetrack or or a dirt bike track or, or you know the, the dunes or whatever but it seems like motorsport at least nowadays is just not as popular as it could should be maybe um the like, indie race downtown which is in in trouble i hear like it's like it, the honda indie like it, it's been it was it, it's been handed over from molson from steel bath from this and that and like it's I don't know like probably the future of it is not as much in question as Monza but <laughs> but um, but you know what I mean like it's 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 it might not get the attendances that it could if or that it should if maybe motorsport was just bigger more popular mm. in North America is it um well he, here's the thing right guys so if you go back to the the heyday of of IndyCar uh, across Canada. You know, you're looking at back in the the 80s and 90s and the very early 2000s when Juan Pablo um, was racing IndyCar. Yeah, against, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like th those um, that that time uh, was huge for motorsports in Canada. Like you know, the 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 Toronto Indy would get you know upwards of you know 80 to 90,000 people attending just the race, not not including just the race weekend. So uh, that alone right there, you know, it, it does state that we do have a strong following. The problem was is when IndyCar split into Champ Car yeah. and then into the IRL. And, and that is basically what fractured um, racing, not only in Canada, but across North America okay. as, as well. That split was uh, so um, uh, destructive to the sport in North America that it just... It's just now starting to to rebound and come back. You know, if you look at uh, the viewership for IndyCar in North America, it has risen uh, dramatically, and that is actually IndyCar is actually the only open wheel racing that has seen an increase in viewership um, in North America. Yeah. Uh, our actually our F one um, from from last year we had like a big jump in viewership as well over at uh, TSN because they've been doing such a great job um, with the product that they own that it's uh, it's really starting to gain a lot of momentum and uh, people are starting to tune back in and, and I'm I'm trying to be that guy who kind of helps and and pushes it kind of back. It'll probably never be what it used to be, but I'm I'm one of the guys who is just trying really, 
Billy Ryan get motorsports uh, back on the radar in Canada because, as you guys know, you're racing fans, you know that we've had some very great Canadian race car drivers, and our country produces a one, lot of great talent. One, one, one of the legends of all time, like people, people in, in you know, the, the, the great motorsports hall, like calls are still talking about whether or not it was Senna or Villeneuve that was the greatest of all time. Yep. Yeah, that that argument is still yeah. is very relevant to this day, you know. You can like obviously the two different eras of formula are a little different, yeah. but that being said, uh, both talent like both super talented. Which is... Yeah. <laughs> and I I just love it how um I, I, people from uh, from outside of Canada, especially British people that I've spoken to, they talk about uh, Villeneuve in a different light that that I would see Villeneuve because they 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 really like they they praise him for his heroism and and for really going for it. But to me, that's just a good old Canadian boy that was just given <laughs> yeah. it. And he was he just... went out there and he gave it all day. <laughs> And on the other hand, Jacques gets all the sh all the shit. That's true. Well, he, Jacques he's, may have spoken a little bit he's too got, much. Got a bit of an attitude sometimes. But. <laughs> yeah, Jacques is Jacques, right? But yeah. his dad was unbelievable. And you know what? If it if it wasn't for his dad, you know, I may not have ever started racing because Gilles is the one who got my father interested in oh, yeah. in racing. Nice. And you know, once that happened, I you know I would wake up every morning with my dad and, and watch Formula One, and and uh, I I love Dyer and Senna. So if it wasn't for like those two drivers, you know, who who knows what would happen to the sport in this country? Oh, that's man. for sure. Oh man, you'd be shucked up in a in a, in a cubicle with a suit, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I could do it. I, uh, I just don't know. I don't know. I, I guess if I like like the job and then you know if I enjoy the job, then that's just part of it. You know what I mean? I think I'm that kind of guy where it's like if it's, uh, if it's something I really like doing, then it's I always look at the things that you don't like the most. You just look at it and be like, hey, that's just part of the job, you yeah. know? Yeah. Well, hey, we're here doing this for free. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, passion, passion for it. So that's amazing. One thing that I think that was very enlightened and and, and very good for the for the Canadian fans at least is uh, the the move, the recent move of TSN as of this year to take the Sky uh, commentary. Which I mean, I love DC as much as the next guy, but Brundle is the best commentator. He's he's <laughs> the he's the guy. He's yeah. the guy. And and they just it, it, Channel you guys, Four got Murray Walker though. Well, you know what? I I didn't know because last year you guys only did half an hour of a pre-show, but this year you do the full thing. The with you know, that's amazing. Yeah, no the the people over at TSN did a great job in getting us that Sky Sports deal because yeah, it nice. is totally awesome. Yeah, and a nice. great point you make about uh, Brundle because I love David Coulthard. I love his commentary mm -hmm. during the race. I think he's spot on. I think he. I think he gives um, that extra little bit of insight that maybe Brundle can't mm -hmm. because he hasn't been in the car in so in so long. Right. But that being said, Brundle can just come out and speak his mind yeah. and say whatever he wants to say and, and not get in trouble, and which is which is what you what you want in in the type of broadcast that that is. Like he he does a great job at that. Yeah, he's on a different kind of pushing the limit. <laughs> yeah, it that definitely is though, right, guys? Like, it, you know, Formula limit. One in, in, in the paddock area can be can be a political place, oh, but yeah. oh, it, it uh, is. <laughs> yeah, but like for a guy like Brundle to come in there and throw his weight around, I think that's pretty awesome, especially for the viewer at home that's yeah. always wondering like, what's going on here? Like, why isn't this being explained properly, or isn't this injustice? And then he's basically the guy who will tell it straight, which yeah. is. Yeah. I mean, I I long for a day to. Uh, that the old BBC F1 commentary team would be reunited with uh, Brundle and Coulthard because that that was that was good commentary. That not honestly that that did a lot at least to because uh, I started watching, I started rewatching, like re getting really really hardcore into F1 and to watching all the races as soon as I could um, when when they were commentating together. And I was I was living in Spain at the time. <clears throat> Whatever the case is. Just because I had stopped kind of following the sport for a little bit, they they did a good job at actually like reacquaint, like you know, to, to get reacquainted with the sport, to get to get to learn to love the sport mm -hmm. again, really. Uh, so I'm I'm glad that you guys got TSN or sorry, uh, the, the TSN got Sky. Now was that like 
like do you have any insight as to like how how those deals kind of get broker like is 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 this does, does bernie have his sticky 85 year old tentacles like in there because it, for people that don't know in england sky is a pay service exclusive f1 content they have their own channel uh, oh, you, as of, you, pay, as of, you pay for that content. as of china they're gonna have streams available to them that nobody else has in england so yeah, well, for for us in, in Canada, I, I can't speak too much about the about the uh, the deal because I don't really know too much about how it kind of, how it came together. Mm -hmm. um, I highly doubt Bernie Ecclestone was involved, but uh, <laughs> I think it, I think it just was a big push on TSN's part to yeah. to notice that you know, hey, this is this is a really great property that we have, and you know, let's blow it up and really do something nice. for the fans. And, and they actually they literally were thinking about about the F1 fan when they went through and, and said, okay, so now that BBC has pulled out, maybe this is a great time for us to try and, and find um, something that the, the hardcore racing fan will, will love. And I think that's an amazing uh, statement from TSN to go out and really – uh, you know, work it and try and get that deal done because you know it's paying off in dividends because they nice. their broadcast is is uh, is really good. Nice, yeah, it's top notch. Th Thank you very much. This this weekend we hosted uh, at a pub, uh, watch F one at Betty's event. Yeah, show, I, I, show I, the TSN. I invited you to that without thinking that of course yeah, you're gonna at, be working. Work on the TSN. <laughs> <laughs> but for the hardcore fans, we had twenty thirty people show up and. Uh, I think everybody loved it. It was awesome. Oh, no, we got to see the race live with the best commentary that's, available. That's amazing. That's oh, amazing. Yo, hey, amazing. Put the put put the picture up. Let, let's show how many people. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me, uh, we let had we had the full ups. Uh, have you ever been to Betty's on King? Uh, I've heard about it, but I've actually have never been there. Oh man, um, it's, it's 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 a good pub. <laughs> but so <laughs> they have this upstairs section that's basically decorated like there your you grandma's <laughs> uh, living room. But it's it's yeah, oh, it's a big. Awesome. Can, can, okay. can you see that? Can, yeah, can you see, see that? that? Yeah, I can see that. That's so cool, and guys. That, that's that, awesome. That's just one shot, like straight out to the middle of the room. There's more off to the side that, that you don't see. But for but, the hardcore fans, we had people showing up at 10:30 in the morning on Sunday to come watch uh, the Bahrain Grand Prix. Yeah. So thank you, yeah. TSN. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank TSN. you very much. Yeah. No, for sure. Well, I mean, yeah. Now make you... sure you uh, make sure you you tweet them because uh, because they'd love to to hear that and to see stuff like that, man. Like uh, that, that that's great stuff. That you know you you guys should uh, yeah definitely always try and tweet tweet uh, TSN Sports for sure, man. They'd love to see this. Yeah. Stuff. Nice. Oh cool. yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, yeah. No, we, we we had a great turnout. Obviously, we have we always get more people for the live races because when when we can't do it live, then then we do the rebroadcast. The the whatever whatever happens at three o'clock or whatever. Uh, right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. But obviously, like, the, yeah. No, it it was a great showing, and and you can feel that more people are maybe are starting to get curious, and I've noticed two big trends, and maybe you can you can expand on that, uh, Tim. One uh, is yeah, yeah. Dude, sorry, sorry, I cut you off. There. Yeah, Go no. Ahead. Well, the the one is disgruntled NASCAR fans. Apparently, with this the chase thing, it's it's got a lot of NASCAR fans saying, "Screw this, let's see what what else is out there," because this is not a competition anymore. You know, the, the same can be the yeah. same can almost be said for place. for F one. Yeah. You know, after after these past after these past couple weekends, when uh, you know with this this qualifying that is like they've got it fixed because it's mm -hmm. it's awful. But uh, that being said, you know the same could probably be said for Formula One. You know, sometimes Formula One fans do feel alienated, oh, yeah. and you know they go looking for other things yeah. uh, as well, like yeah. like IndyCar. Yeah. Like you know, IndyCar's ratings have have come up like through North America. Mm -hmm. So is that the Hardcore F1 fan starting to look for something a little bit different, and they found that in IndyCar, or maybe they go to NASCAR. You know, so it's it's um, it, it, it can be said for both sports. You know what I mean? It's, uh, they're two diff totally different sports: mm -hmm. NASCAR, Formula One. Mm -hmm. uh, both are are so different, but I think if you're a motorsports fan, yeah, you'll you'll watch anything. Oh, I, I, maybe maybe the presence of Haas and how good did they do last weekend uh, has has gone a long way to like make for it more Americans especially more, more digestible for Americans for sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. For for the American uh, public, I think that the the Haas F one story uh, is pretty amazing, right, guys? Like it's uh, it's nice to hear uh, someone as passionate as a guy like Roman Grosjean, you know, really screaming. 
the American dream. Like, yeah. yeah, but he's like, you know, he's so into it, and he's saying like, yeah. this is like the American dream or yeah. whatever, and, that, and that's an American team. You know, yeah. sure they have some of the parts from Ferrari, and they get their, they need to get their engines from somewhere, yeah. and they get them from Ferrari, which is which is totally legit. But you know, that being said, it is an American team, mm-hmm. um, and I think it's, I think that's a great story. I think that's a great story for Formula One for to Formula try and one, yeah. grow the to grow that brand in in, yeah. uh, in USA. I it I, I find it great because they're not like and and inevitably like this is for sure going to become a story soon sooner than later where the smaller teams or the midfield teams are going to start being like oh what are you doing has if one something must be illegal but it's not it's all within the rules they've done everything that that could be done they just the only thing that they did differently than say uh, for Cindia or, or or a Sauber is to come to terms with the fact that you do you can be a manufacturer and not make every single part and of your the, chassis. At the same time, they've stated that their goal, their goal moving forward, is to build as many parts as they can themselves. Yeah, they, they started they started this way, and they're gonna but build out re- rem- remember, their own team as 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 quickly as as they can. Re- remember, so re- remember that guy from Air Asia and his catering effort. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah they're gone. Yeah, they, they don't exist they, anymore. But they they came into F one with maybe as much money as Haas did, and they were never anything but a back marker and like a painful to watch back marker at times. And look at Haas doing everything right, getting getting stuff done, getting into the points. The first two, the first two races into like like let's be honest. After causing a red flag in Australia, fifth place yeah. is like it, that's not, that's not an accident. No, no, no that's that's a, that's a legit great drive by uh, by Grosjean. And he had a car that could that could accommodate his drive. Exactly, in his driving style, you know, and the the great thing, I think about that uh, the Delara, it's because Delara makes uh, a lot of action, like a lot of the car, like the Delara makes a big part of that yeah. that chassis that they run, and which was a smart move by by Genie Haas to you know outsource yeah. uh, Delara to make them a Formula One car instead yeah. of spending all of that money to try and build their own allegedly designed by product. Haas, though. allegedly designed by Haas. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's but you, you know you got to think that like the, uh, the the Italians obviously had had a hand in it. And, and why not like you yeah, said why, why not because they they have experience uh, designing pretty much every other chassis for every other F1 feeder series out there like what formula 3 they design all that don't didn't they at one point they design all Indies, of the indie ones Indies as well. yeah, or like they yeah. still do indie cars yeah, they still do one of two cars. choices no no they they still they still make uh, the, whole the entire field? indie car the indie car chassis oh, okay. Yeah, so pretty much everything. It's not like Dalar does not have a motorsport experience. They're not coming out of nowhere, and you know what's you know what's okay. So one of the rules um, dictates that you can outsource these parts only to teams or or only to organizations that aren't currently competing in Formula One. So has got Dalara. That means that somebody else, if they want to come and, and start doing that, they can't just go to Dalara now. And as for the same, they have to find somebody else. So they like they, it was well thought out. Gunter Steiner and Haas, like they 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 did the job. Yeah, yeah, they did a brilliant job. And it's just it just goes it's just showing you right now. Like you're seeing the product out on the track, um, and and that is just teamwork and that's just hard work. Of course, they're gonna have they're gonna they're gonna struggle a little bit in the mm-hmm. season I think um, as every new team does you tend to get a little worn out by uh, the F1 circus you know it, it goes across the world it is global guys are gonna get tired out um, but that being said to have the start that they have had is an amazing story it's just you cannot if you were to go back in December and tell me that you know Roman Grosjean was going to finish sixth and fifth in the first two rounds of the Formula World Championship, well, you, you would have been crazy. booed out the room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's yeah, it, it is an it is an amazing success story. I'm sure we're going to be like talking about it and hearing about it for the rest of the year. How about that Van Dorn though? Yeah, that's uh, that's a. That's a great. Uh, that not only a great story, but you know, good good for him. He's 24 years old. 
Um, at that point, I always thought that with this new age of Formula One, that once you kind of get to 24, 25, it's going to be harder for you to kind of break into Formula One. But I think Van Dorn is just kind of proving everybody wrong that it, you know, age is kind of just a number uh, once once it comes to racing because his racing pedigree and his background, he's you know multiple champion in different levels. You know, pretty much almost every racing series he's been in he's won a championship in which or been runner up extremely hard to do yeah if he's not one he's been runner up yeah Yeah. exactly (laughs) and having a 10th place finish um you know in in your first race basically just getting a phone call on a thursday night saying like hey you know you're on your way to uh to bahrain um (laughs) You're you're driving now, and, yeah. and here's a ton of data that uh, we're gonna shove your way. And you're gonna have to analyze all this data. Yeah. Good luck with that one. And like, and then came out of the Did box and was flying. Did it all, yeah. Uh, uh, qualified button, a uh, world champion. Listen, let's, let's not. I, 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 a lot of people put the 2009 championship under an asterisk, but he was. He was a world champion. Yeah, he was. That he out. That he out Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Former world champion. <laughs> But <laughs> it, with 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 a with a with a very hard. I mean, he was. He, there was no way the button wasn't going to win that year. But anyway, <laughs> he was world champion. <laughs> uh, I got a question, um, and it, we we kind of already talked about it before. Yeah. But uh, you know, I, I love watching it live is whenever I can, and TSN is the place to sort of do it. But you know, one of the biggest things for us was the commercials. Uh, that sort of seemed to jump in almost randomly. Now, is that like the only <laughs> approach to do that? Like, is there another way to do it? Because, you know, the other sports like hockey, baseball, football, there's breaks, there's a place for it. But when it comes to Formula One, it's like a hundred and... Earth, a, Earth is just powered minutes. by commercials. <laughs> yeah, the whole know, planet. You know, and I get that. Like, you know what? I'll take, I'll take uh, commercials at the bottom... You know, but like I, I want to see, I want to see the action just in case something happens. Like I think last, uh, the last race we were in the. Well, I mean, I, w- when we show the 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 race at Betty's, we're kind of lucky because they have like a fifty something inch TV, so it's right. big, it's big enough to still see the oh, action, yeah, absolutely. even when it's only like being reduced to have the screen. But um, may, yeah, maybe maybe that's a concern. Yeah, well, obviously, I'm sure that that's a concern that the fans have. Uh, is there anything down the pipelines that? TSN is looking into maybe. That's <laughs> true, sure, guys. It, it's really that, that's uh, it's a really hard thing to do, right? And I yeah, think yeah. The no, best that's why that Sky costs hundreds of dollars a year in the, in the yeah. UK. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, exactly, right? And, and that's why you know, like Sky One, um, their stuff is is live kind of all the time because people are are paying for that. Uh, well, there's a demand there, number one, like yeah. m- more so than here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but with the, but with us, you know, with with TS, it is difficult um, to try and and splice in commercials with race action. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they do their they definitely do their best because that's one of the things that a lot of people like tweet me or email me about is like, hey, you know, you cut into a commercial uh, during this type of action. And right, it's like, right, oh, right. well, it wasn't me. You yeah, did. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't do I'm that. Like, First of all, it's really really hard because so you need. You need that commercial time. Yeah. Um, you, you just you just need it, mm-hmm. and they do their best job at trying to pick the right time in the race to sh- to show that commercial because it's they they don't want to interrupt the track action, and there is points in a Grand Prix where there are lulls. Yeah, in it. absolutely. Yes, there are. There is no yes. action, in it and they right. try and time it so they can get those commercials in and around that lull, and yeah. then they do their best, and that's all that you know. That that's all you, we can uh, offer until uh, you know maybe they maybe we try and figure something else out maybe on later on down the road but yeah. but for now it's it's the best form of action. It's actually you, you know what it might it might also be like like you said the the, the cutting of commercials uh, it 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 does kind of distract from the action but one thing that I do remember my girlfriend who is I mean I, I couldn't say with a straight face that she's into F1. She maybe just okay. sort of tolerates it because I like <laughs> it. Uh, but but she showed up to, to, to Betty's that one time. She was there. And one thing that she noticed or that she told me is like, you know what? Like, the, there definitely was 
more room for conversation. Like if you were in the, in a situation where you were what if you were watching the race with other people, those commercial breaks like help to kind of like what did we just like, see? What's going to happen yeah, next? Yeah, what's right. what, what's happening? Did you see that? Did you see? Yeah. So that that was cool. I mean, I, <laughs> it's it's almost unfortunate that the last two races have been so exciting. <laughs> you, you, you know what I mean? Like, had yeah, it been sort sure. of last year. <laughs> or uh, where like there's these races where like you know it's it's Rosberg, uh, Lewis Hamilton, Vettel in the front. You're like, that's well, it. yeah. <laughs> all right, <laughs> we'll just like, like, ride this one. Out. <laughs> what? Yeah, what? totally. Like, like it's a good, great point that you make. Like with this year, I I know like it's for a fact it's been very tough to try and find those spots to jam in the commercials Absolutely. because it's the on track action has just been. <laughs> just like, there's always something going on. So much of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but 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 uh, you know. All the circumstances sort of put together, I think. Uh, I think you guys do a great job uh, in the end of it. I mean, we couldn't ask for yeah. anything. No, it's, it, honestly, like well, I'm pretty sure in this very podcast last year, I said something to the tune of TNSN. I mean, it was good, but wouldn't it be great if they had the Sky commentary? Oh yeah, I, I, yeah, I did yeah, say that. Yeah, it happened. <laughs> it happened. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, <laughs> oh, TSN, they're great. Wouldn't it be great if they didn't have any commercials? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this time next year maybe, yeah maybe this time next year <laughs> so no. just uh yeah man like just make sure you guys i guess reach out reach out to them and just thank them for for yeah. doing that because uh they were thinking of they were thinking of you guys when they when they went and they did this deal ah nice. cool uh, Hey, so well, ma you, make sure to tell them thank you from us, okay? <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it. We'll, we'll, no, we, we will make sure to tweet that. Later. Yeah. <laughs> so hey, ma maybe the biggest topic, for, first of all, thanks for talking to us again. I don't know how long you have to talk to us. We've been talking about half an hour, but qualifying. Like an hour. We've got to talk about this quick before <laughs> before we end this. More like an hour, fifty minutes actually to the dog. No, it's all, it's, it's all <laughs> good, man. We can talk qualifying. YouTube and, says thirty six uh, minutes and thirty eight seconds. What? I don't know. Oh my god! What, what do you think about this qualifying situation? Oh, what? What's first of all? What do you think about how it's been? What's your prediction for maybe their decision? Because there's so many up in the air. Yeah. I think um, and a big a big thing is if if they want to stick with this type of qualifying uh, teams are going to need a, an extra set of tires. Yeah. That's sure. That, that's just that Pirelli is going to have to go ahead and start making more tires for and, them because, and, and, and actually that is something that Pirelli said that they, they actually have a deadline of yeah, when this do, can yeah. even be feasible period, because they have to, they have to make the damn things. Yeah. Yeah. So before, it, before, it's, it's not like it's like making a Formula One tire. It's not like, oh yeah, we'll just slap some rubber on this and away we go. No, it's like you, there is so many different types of layers, and yeah. the tire needs to be baked properly. It's, it's almost it's almost a handmade tire. process. It is a handmade yeah. process. It's exactly that's yeah. exactly what it is. So it's, it's wrapped up it like, forever, like a cigar. So. Yeah. so Jay Jay did a little math here. Be yeah. Before we started the show. So so he so here's Check the thing. Yeah. This is regarding this new aggregate. Well, first actually, before I even talk about this, have you ever in your in your motorsport experience been participated in, yeah, an in an aggregate, aggregate qualifying? qualifying? Oh, never. <laughs> I would. I wouldn't. I. I would never want. I would never want to because you know you're paid to go out there and throw it on the line and like yeah. you know. Balls are laps. laps. Like, yeah, not that's, not that's, the two that's, fastest that's laps. You Listen, can maybe you, you can be you can be Mister Consistent on Sunday on race day, yeah. but yeah. but Saturday is all about who's the quickest guy. Who's and, the fastest? Yeah, he, and here here's one thing. So I did I did just like a quick analysis on the uh, qualifying uh, data. So if they had picked the first or the the, 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 the two fastest laps of of each driver and added that up the same way that they want to do next week uh, in China or whatever or for the rest of the year if Jean Todd gets to say um the the grid would have looked completely different even at the top so you would have had that Nico Rosberg actually would have been would have would have been pole position followed by Vettel followed by Hamilton mm -hmm. like if, yeah cuz Hamilton went off yeah so like it's it's that different. It's not it's not a little different. It would be that different. Now I can Which see is what Bernie wants. Yeah, well, that's what Jean taught. The variability, right? But do we do we do we really need that? Because I think that the last two races have been great, despite whatever they've been trying to do with with the qualifying. 
it's been it's just been great racing because you know other elements have come to play the tires the three tires definitely have come uh, have added that extra um level of strategy and whatever and and unpredictability big time but the 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 and then you have teams like ferrari catching up teams are catching up the the action is f1 has a product that is that is a good product mm. i think that they're wasting way too much time in trying to figure something out that is not even the main problem with f1 right now <laughs> you know what i mean it's it's it's, it's kind of yeah. it, is there a disconnect in between the people that are running the sport and and the sport itself I don't know if it's a, it's not it's it's more of a it's more of a power play I think uh, between you know the guys like the guys at the top like Bernie Ecclestone Jean Todd like, and just them just trying to figure out you know, who's really in control of of Formula One um, I think that's kind of what is really going on here and you know what like if this aggregate qualifying thing goes through it is it's not going to be a very good thing it's not going to be a good thing for the sport um the drivers aren't going to be happy with it and yeah you know people pay good money to show up on saturday to see who is the fastest yeah. and they're not going to understand the average fan you're trying to get the average fan on board to watch formula one you're not going to do it by having aggregate qualifying no. because they're not even going to know what's going on it seems like that's what we're going to be watching, unfortunately, in China. Well, we'll see, we'll see Thursday, right? So yeah. cross yeah, your we'll fingers. See. You never Two know more... what's going to happen. It is Formula One. <laughs> <laughs> Two more days of schmoozing until then to, to figure it out. What, one of the interesting things, I, I, I don't know if you've had the, the pleasure of reading um, The Art of War by Adam Parr. <laughs> I have heard about it, but I've never read it. I, Adam, I listened to the audio book. No, no, no. Of of Adam Parr's uh no Adam Parr not Shun Tzu oh Shun Tzu yes <laughs> I read the no no Adam Shun Adam Parr Shun used Shun to be the uh like the uh, the the technical director or like the the team principal at uh, Williams way back in the day uh or you know back the, way back in the day now but he's been out of F1 for like a decade or a right around but anyway he put out this this book that's called The Art of War um Adam Parr P A A R R um the War of Art. <clears throat> And it's it's a graphic novel almost, so it's like a cartoon book. But it it really actually some of it is like really poignant. Anyway, one of the things that like he 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 tried to convey in the book is that the way that F one is run is that it's not just it's not just one meeting or 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 it's not just a, or it's not a series of meetings. It's like being in F one for a year. It's like being in a one year long meeting where you just meet. Like it's sometimes like you're up till three o'clock stuck in these meeting rooms and it's always the same shit and it's always <laughs> Bernie saying something. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and, it, and it's kind of weird like that and things rarely get done the way they need to be because of that, because of the archaic system. And I'm sure things like this worked in the 70s, but um, perhaps they don't now. And 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 we have to listen to what the drivers are saying. Like did, 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 You got a hold, I'm sure, of that uh, GPDA letter that they put out. Where 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 they basically like directed it to Bernie and said, "Listen, the, the the system is broken." The thing is, the thing with that is, is you know, Bernie, uh, uh, I bet a hundred bucks Bernie's had letters sent to him from the drivers uh, before. This is the first time it's ever been made public. Mm -hmm. uh, it's you know, Bernie. I think we'll we'll look at it as drivers drive and the businessmen do the business, and that's kind of how yeah, he probably, runs yeah. runs things. Yeah. And that's how he expects things to to roll. Um, you know, you need you do need a guy like uh, a Lewis Hamilton speaking up and, and a Sebastian, you know, speaking up and speaking out because those two guys right now, and same with Nico Rosberg, are are the faces and the voices of the sport, yeah. uh, Formula One. And whenever people sit there and slam Lewis Hamilton, you know, you can't, you just can't do that because. He is the most passionate F1 person there is out there, and he is, you know, the voice of the sport, and that sport really needs him to to keep speaking out and keep speaking his mind and and keep doing what he's doing, like yeah. being very active on social media and recording that mixtape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know what I mean. But like, still, like uh, cruising around the world, spending months just in Toronto. Yeah, like, in Toronto, out in Toronto, like just spending months cool. here. He, 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 loves, he, he loves our city. No, he, he actually really likes Toronto. He came here to train, right? Like he was here training a few days. Anyway, like, yeah, no, no, doing that. That why not? 
and yeah, exactly. So that's just part of that 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 the voice of, of F1 that you kind of need. You know, the GPA G- GPDA is great. Alex Wirtz does a great job, but it needs Lewis Hamilton, it needs Sebastian Vettel, and it needs Nico Rosberg. But all three of them have put like they've and, said publicly that they agree with that letter. Need to keep doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Can't stop. Now, if they're doing it, why not us? And it's and it's something that I think that we've been harping on for a while. Like mm-hmm. we we genuinely believe that in this day and age, it's not like it used to be. They actually the, the fans, us, the fans, we have a say, and we have to have a say. And and we there are things that we can be doing out there. Uh, geez, I mean we we're, we're trying to we're trying our best by putting the, the, these events together like a Betty's or whatever but um, I, I find that it's <clears throat> it's hard to communicate your passion for something like F1 that's so yeah. it's, it's, it's such a high learning curve even even when we started the podcast Mike here he had no idea about F1 so not it was, a thing yeah, I he, knew nothing about Formula <laughs> 1 it's, it's been a year do you have it any absolutely <laughs> I, can, I now talk about F1 like I talk about hockey yeah nice I know the players I know who they are I know the, yes. what the state of the sport is in which yeah. is fantastic and I'm excited to talk about it yeah but, cool. but that, that took some time Time, right it took me a year yeah <laughs> uh I'm, i'm sure i mean you you working from the inside tim like you at, at tsn like I, i'm sure you've been in a situation before where you've had to explain to somebody like why why do you is, like why, yeah well yeah, why do you like why do you watch these yeah. guys <laughs> what's what's your I answer to that <laughs> i always get I, sometimes i always get asked uh why do you do this not in terms of like why i work at the SM, but why why do you why do you race you know why do you do that i think uh my heart is behind the wheel mm. uh i think it's just something that's in your dna i really do i don't think it's i don't you know you can grow to like something but to be very passionate about racing and taking something to the limit and being confident in yourself and, and finding out uh finding out who you are um Is, is a big part of racing, you know, because it'll it'll teach you if you're a, if you're a man, and it'll teach you if uh, <laughs> it will, and, and it'll teach you like you know where um, you know how brave are you? Uh, what are your? It'll teach you everything. What are your morals? What you know? Um, what do you believe in? All that kind of stuff, and and that's what I take away from from racing because it kind of gave so much of that to me. So when people come to me and say, "Hey, why do you watch this?" Or why do you compete in it? Or why are you a part of it? Is just because it's it's just in my blood. It's what I do. It's what I love. It, I can't really explain it other more than that. It's just my heart is absolutely in it, and I wouldn't know what to do uh, with myself outside of racing. I just wouldn't know what to do. I'll amen to that. That's Perfect awesome. answer. Yeah. <laughs> so I kind of have a follow up question. Yeah. Yeah. So me starting to get into F one last yeah. year. All right. Um, so this high learning curve, like very steep. Like, you have to, you can't, and it's true, especially with Formula One. Yeah. It's like, you can't just watch a race. You're like, yeah, they're going fast, but it doesn't really mean anything. Not the sense that the speed, but, like, the players exactly. that are involved. Well, actually, I think I think that's part of, I mean, I'm sorry to cut you off, but it we, we are at a point right now where, like, you know, maybe perhaps a watcher, of uh, a viewer of, of F1 in the 70s could have gotten an idea of how fast they're going, but... The problem now is that these cars are so good at going so fast that when you watch them on TV right. and you and you don't know how fast it's, they're going, they actually like the smoother they go around, the faster they're gonna be going. But that right. looks, uh, it doesn't look doesn't as fast. Look as but uh, it's okay. So the the question essentially was, yeah. how do we? This is, might sound stupid, but how do you <laughs> get people to actually watch the sport like f- who know nothing about it? And I think uh, there, there's no real structure or support for people trying to get into F1. It's just kind of like it exists. <laughs> it's, 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 it's either like you, you've already been in it since the dawn of time or uh, you're never going to get into it <laughs> unless you have like two really good friends that know everything about it. It's a dream. Uh, it's a dream. It, it is. Yeah. It was all a dream. Yeah. That, that must be it. I think uh, it's a dream for everybody that's there for sure. You know what? I think uh, that's a good point that you make, though. It really is. I think uh, a big part of that is trying to have someone like myself around to help explain um, what's going on and trying to translate that passion into um, 
uh, words and just saying like, hey, this is what's actually happening. Or mm-hmm. there, people just see cars going around when absolutely, it's it's so far yeah. from that. Right. Yeah, exactly. Oh, exactly. There's <laughs> so much. There's so much going on inside that <laughs> that cockpit of the car, yeah. like. You know, you're managing your tires. You're trying to be aggressive. You're braking with you know 500 foot pounds of, of of force into the pedal. You're doing the same with the gas pedal because gravity's trying to rip your foot off of the gas. <laughs> <laughs> the steering wheel's trying to rip your arms apart. You have gravity is trying to rip the head off your shoulders. You have other guys breathing down your neck. You're trying to either conserve you know fuel or conserve battery life now or conserve your tires. Right. Uh, manage strategy. Try to stay out of trouble. You know, but still trying to pass people. Game position. Uh, outsmart somebody. Finding where their weaknesses are out on the track. There's just so much going on inside don't, of. Don't you know, don't race. don't lose focus. Yeah. Yeah. Don't lose focus. Exactly. Yeah. As yeah. soon as you lose focus, like you become you, Maldonado. You, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And it's it's a good point. Another point you made, like you know, you're watching, um, you know, you're watching the cars go around, and, and you say, oh, well, they do look kind of slow. But then once you see Fernando Alonso's crash, mm-hmm. and you're oh, like, yeah. oh, oh, fuck. Okay, uh, okay, that's really, yeah. You're like, okay, that this is really fast. Like this is, this is, yeah, this is just real. keep r- reminding yourself of that whenever yeah. you're like, oh, they look, they look slow, and then just remember Alonso's crash and yeah. how fast that happened. Yeah. Yeah. Three hundred ten kilometers an hour. No, that was even scary in slow motion. Yeah. Oh like yeah. Yourself. It's terrifying. <laughs> I was I, absolutely, absolutely. It's was. funny. I, I when I tell people that I do a Formula One podcast, yeah. the first is what. And the second is, I didn't know you were into Formula One. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have two buddies that got me into it. And they're always like, I didn't even know like how to get into this sport. Yeah. And I feel like <laughs> my journey uh, in this podcast, my spiritual journey within this podcast, is exactly that. It's like, if you watched our podcast from the beginning, you would see this just growth of a hero, Frodo Baggins, leading the ring into, Mor- into Mordor, dropping. He gets a finger you, bitten off, but you're you good. simply do not walk into Formula One. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Absolutely. But it's a, it, once you do, it is like really rewarding. It's very rewarding. But I almost feel like. A lot it's of fun, rewarding right? in the same way as tabloids to some degree. Where like there's always something going on. It's like, oh, did you hear about Bernie Ecclestone? No, he didn't. <laughs> yeah. Or like you, you know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. Like like one of these things. But also there's there's a rich history of the sport and the, and the and the breads. Like, one of the things in my like uh, seventy five years now. Yeah. <laughs> what <laughs> this uh, I was watching uh I forget what it was, qualifying for something. Um and my girlfriend's brother was over at my place and like he was just like he just sat down at the couch because i was doing something and drinking a beer not paying attention to him so he came to find out what i was doing and 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 he like i i think i could see that he that it caught his interest for for quite a while and i mean it was qualifying last year so that was the rapid fire action whatever so something was happening yeah Yeah, right (laughs) Uh, and and then he he turned around and he was like oh man like you, you could tell he, he just had no idea. And he was like, so like, oh, like, what's going on? Like, so there's this team that's called Ferrari and then this team that's called Mercedes. Like, surely they must like, th- th- do they have some sort of like, do, do they have to pay anything to, to Ferrari or Mercedes to, to use their name? And I was like, no, man. They like, are Enzo, those teams. Enzo, they Enzo, are Enzo, all of Ferrari. Yeah. Is it? Enzo Ferrari their was full only power. started making car, like the beautiful sports cars to finance the F1 operation. And that's like, maybe like, the rich history of the sport is is it, it, it comes to play for sure yeah, and, and it absolutely. adds to the passion it is great no totally, totally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's huge i think uh i think what you guys do i think it's amazing i think getting people together and going to watch the races at a place like betty's i think that's i think that's awesome and i think they're i think you guys need to keep doing what you're doing because i really do think that you know you guys are the lifeblood of of auto racing in oh, canada thank you. And, oh, thanks. And you're, yeah, we hope to it's, a, it's fun. you're kind it's of fun. like that, it's that a, it's a hobby for us that's right? going to try and help help bring uh bring more fans along and i think it's uh it's just going to get even bigger now that we have you know we have three canadian kids i, uh, I, 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 I want that to be sort of a yeah. segue to that and like it is now a yeah, good yeah, time yeah, go to talk it. about our boys that are out yeah. there okay um mr stroh so I, no, I only know about, about a handful of or a couple of them um but i don't know how you are with time but i i We've been actually following in the podcast since last year. Uh, Lance Stroll's advancement through uh, the uh, that thing that he did at the beginning, the, the Toyota Racing Series at the beginning of last year, which he won. Then he went to Formula 3, 
he he did okay, but now he's with uh, again with Prema and more involved, and he won the first race. So he's he's been doing great. He's a test driver for Williams. We know that he's that he's got the money. Let's not let's be honest. Uh, <laughs> but I have actually heard more recently more interesting and like more interesting stuff coming out about Latifi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nicholas Latifi. Uh... Uh, he's, uh, he's, he's awesome, man. Like you, you guys would, uh, really, really like him. He's super down to earth. Uh, he's got a great sense of humor. Um, and you know, being signed to Renault is not a bad thing. So, uh, that's good for him. It's good for his career and, and what he's been able to achieve, uh, only getting into racing when he was 14 years old. Yeah. That's what I heard. Uh, that. Yeah. Yeah. Starting, starting with go-karts and then working his way, um through the ladder system now up in gp2 he's racing with one of the best teams in gp2 uh he's got a great teammate in alex lynn uh he's been telling me uh he's been learning a lot from alex uh this year you know nicholas is really alex, looking at alex lynn um, like on his uh what he's on his third season of gp2 or something like that so he, he knows yeah, a lot and Nick Yeah, Nicholas has been keeping pace with him in testing yeah, too. Nice. It hasn't been it hasn't been like Nicholas is getting his doors blown off. It's like Nicholas is faster than him in some sectors of the track, and Nicholas is a couple tenths of a second off of uh, Lynn's faster times. Uh, there's some things that he needs to work on, obviously, and he knows that, and he needs uh, he needs to start uh, learning more about the tires mm -hmm. uh, because they play a big factor in GP2, and this is what he's learning, um, learning uh, a different type of braking style because the com the the, the basically the uh uh the compound that they use in the brake uh caliper itself and the pads is different from what he was using a year ago so it oh. just means that he can't be as aggressive on the brake pedal as he's used to um but he's a talented he's a talented guy and he's gonna figure it out uh, is, isn't he race, isn't he local like from around here or something yeah he's from he's from toronto nice and uh tsn's gonna try and uh tsn's gonna try and bring him in next week and um and, and get him on their show and ho hopefully nice. that happens you know that it'd be really cool if it does um i think uh you know nicholas would be great for the for the sport in canada and and growing it because he's just got that great personality that that would help for for sure yeah that's people, awesome it's, yeah, it's yeah. Him, no. him and lance stroll both signed this yeah. year as development and testing drivers for formula mm -hmm. one two canadians mm -hmm. making sure the cars work are we going to have you know within 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 reach is is the next canadian formula one driver within reach in those two guys yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I I I think I think way. by 2018, you could right. we're, we might have two uh, two Canadians in Formula One. Two Canadians, they're not they're just I, one. Honestly, they're already, yeah, they're already in there technically. That's true. Yeah, they're racing, but they're in the. Uh, oh, there we go. Are we are we here? <laughs> that was really scary. That has I paid a lot of money for, for this fucking thing. And it just like stopped. It's just like See, we're, nah, we're, I'm good. We're not quite at the TSN broadcast level yet. <laughs> What are you are you talking about my little room here? Oh, come on guys. We're really sorry about that, One Tim. Day. <laughs> no, don't worry about it, man. It, it happens. For, this is for, uh It's a first for us. When we're out, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Before, before. Oh god. Anyway, uh, <laughs> do you remember the last thing you were saying? Because we like the audio cut off like right mid sentence. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, just just basically talking about how uh, having two Canadians in, in Formula One by 2018 is definitely an achievable, nice, uh, achievable thing. Just simply because, like, it's it's uh, when you have two Canadians who are signed as 
you know, either test and reserve drivers or just test drivers, mm-hmm. you know, that means that uh, teams are interested in in their talent. You look at Robert Wickens, you know, he was the last Canadian to ever be signed to uh, a deal like this. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, yeah, he, he's, it's really he's, good. He's happier at DTM now, though, right? Wickens. Yeah, I was talking to I was talking to Robbie uh, last week. He's uh, going to be testing here soon. He's coming back to Canada nice. in a couple weeks. Um, yeah, you're gonna hopefully you're going to try and get him over to TSN as well. Um, Robbie's a great guy. I really wish uh, he had gotten into Formula One. Uh, great driver, super talented, and uh, just good for the all around good for the sport. But yeah, he's tearing it up in DTM right now. Yeah, he's 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 big in Germany. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he is big in Germany. <laughs> it's like when when a rock band gets big in Japan, he's big in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> Go <laughs> uh, yeah. Canada. Yeah. He's Canadian. Oh, he's big in Germany. Oh, yeah, Germany. <laughs> oh man, that's so, it, the, the 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 crazy world of motorsports the, <laughs> that that we just happen to be passionate about. Love it. Um, Tim, uh, I th- yeah. I'm I'm sure by this point we've taken way too much of your time. Thank you Love so it. much for coming on the show. Apologies uh, and thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that amateur moment. Uh Don't Tim um I'm sh- like, we've we've mentioned it before but I just want to I just want the good people of the internet to hear it. This is not going to be a a, a, a a one in a in a lifetime type of thing. We can, we can expect to see you back in the show. Yeah, for sure guys, whenever you whenever you need me, I'll uh, I'll definitely come on and talk to you for sure. Talk racing all day long. And and for sure, let's go let's go grab a beer one of these days. Honestly, let's do <laughs> yeah, it. Man, I'm down. I'm down. I'm down. Yeah. You come by to Betty's too, one of the non <laughs> non live events, perhaps. If you're, not, if you're not working, if you guys yeah, just let me now. know, and I'll do my best to get there. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, uh, I think uh, with that we can we can wrap it up. Uh, honestly, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you and, very much. Uh, Thanks for the insight. Let's uh, let's the fun. let's keep fighting for the sport. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. It's exactly what you got to do. And like I said, you guys do a great job of it. So just keep doing it. Uh, thanks again for having me on. I had a great time. No problem. And uh, yeah, man, stay in touch. Yeah, we will. Definitely. Okay, guys. Guaranteed. Thank Cheers. You. See you. Good afternoon. Yeah. Cheers. Wicked. Cool. That was fun.